everybody. So for a lot of new people out there who want to get into desktop and home studio recording, compression remains a bit of a mystery because the controls are just basically really confusing. I mean, like, I didn't know what the hell they did when I was starting out either. I mean, threshold, ratio, tack release, all that kind of stuff. It, it really kind of, you know, makes you scratch your head and go, well, what the hell were they thinking? Now, I've already touched on this a bit in a video called How to Use a Compressor, but I've got something brand new here for you today from AIX DSP, and these are the guys who are making some really super useful plugins. Uh, if you checked out my greatest Tom sound trick I ever learned video there I did a couple weeks back, you'll see exactly what I was talking about. They've got the multiband gate as well, which is stellar on drums, but the new compressor they have uh, got me a drum sound like this. Now that snare sound and that whole mix actually was possible because of the intuition compressor. What this does is it gives you a visual feedback line to show exactly what's going on with the compression so you can slam down on your signal exactly how much you want. And it gives you an actual visual feedback about what's going on in a way that no other plugin has ever done. The insane thing is I'm not only using it on the snare, I'm using it on the whole mix. Kick, toms, drum room, bass guitar, and even the two bus. So let's take a look at where I'm using it on various elements of the mix, and I'll show you what's going on and what makes this compressor so much more interesting than what else is out there at the moment. All right, first up, let's just solo up the snare here, and we're going to mute out the reverb, and we're just going to take a listen to the to signal by itself. So now if we turn off all the effects here, That's just the raw snare sound there. That's uh, with no EQ or compression or gating or anything like that. I'm using a combination of the multiband gate and the drum EQ to kind of uh, shape the initial sound. So this is what we get with just the EQ and the gate. And we add a compressor onto it. Gives us a hell of a crack. And th this is really great, especially when you start combining it with a bunch of other mics. Because out of the top snare mic, we want to get a lot of the mid-range and a lot of the bottom end, but just a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of the top end. And that's where the multiband gate comes into play because we can set it for a different attack and release time, how the gate opens and closes. And we're EQing at, it looks like, right about the 3,000 kilohertz mark and up. So... So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to dial in the compressor and show you exactly what's going on and how we're getting that massive, massive attack. So again, gate and EQ going on right now. Let's throw the compressor on. Nothing going on. This green line here represents what's going on with the compression. Now, a compressor just basically is a very, very fast volume fader. All you're doing is turning the signal down. But we can use the controls in a creative way to get much more interesting sounds out of the instruments than just straight up level control. And this is where the attack and release come in handy. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the ratio at maximum. We're going to set a fast attack, fast release, full, full dry and wet. And we're just going to roll it here for a minute. I'm going to put this on a loop. And we're going to dial this fucker in. Well, first thing we want to do is bring the threshold down until it starts affecting the signal. And see right here, we're starting to get a little bit of compression going on. Shut up, Siri. We're going to increase that release time. As you can see, as we increase the release time, that's the amount of time it takes for the signal to return back to zero. Pretty simple stuff once, you, once you've got a visual representation of what's going on. So we're going to pull this threshold back even harder until we really start slamming down on this thing. Now we've almost turned the snare down completely. If we take the release time back, you hear just a bit of that hmm of the sustain on the snare. So we just basically killed the initial attack on the snare. Now this is where it gets to be fun. So we've got something insane like 30 dBs of compression going on. But watch this, when we pull the attack time back. Now 
Now we just got this big spike going on. And th this is where it starts to get fun. If we pull the ratio back. It's not stomping down quite as hard. If we pull it right back. It's almost like it's barely there. But we want to be, I think, fairly aggressive because we want to add kind of an, an attack onto the snare. Like in, instead of just, you know, piff, 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 we want crack, crack, crack. We want that massive attack going on. Basically, what it means is for every 10 dBs past the threshold, it's going to let the signal up 1 dB. So it's a pretty simple concept to get your head around once you've got an idea of what it's actually doing. Again, compression isn't exactly the most intuitive thing on earth, hence that's why they came up with the Intuition Compressor. So we're going to pull this back, maybe about 6 to 1. Pull the threshold back a bit. Bypass. We're going to make up a bit of gain here. So we're basically turning that spike up. I want the release down a bit more. I want a slower release. And if we turn that off, Speed up the attack a little bit. And off again. That adds a hell of a smack. Now, I made up a really cool preset here when I dialed this in the other night. Let's see how close I got to the original thing. Okay, the attack was a little slower. It was about a 5 to 1 ratio. I wanted this a little bit more attacky, though, so we're going to pull the ratio back even harder. Now it's getting a little too piffy. We're going to open up the attack time a bit more. Let that whole transient come through, but we're kind of killing the sustain. Let's see how that looks. So we're kind of killing the sustain a little bit. I'm going to open up the release time really fast. That's just Smack City. That's the original. And back to compressed. I'm going to pull the makeup gain down just a touch. So we're not going to spike the signal out. Cool. Put a little reverb on that snare. Now, what I've done here on the bottom stair is kind of the same thing. I've just kind of, you know, copied over the same EQ settings and the same compressor settings on the bottom snare. And we're getting... Let's increase the release. Bring that threshold back a bit more. And hit that a bit harder. So that's a bit more crack on that bottom snare. Let's take a listen to that. Combine the two. Remember, always flip your face. Normally, I really don't care too very much for a bottom snare mic, but in this case, using the Intuition Compressor, it really helps me round out that, that initial attack on the snare. It just adds that much more bite to it. That's cool. I like that. So that's no reverb. Just got that fucking shotgun effect, and I really dig that quite a bit. Now, I'm not just using this on snare. Like I said, I'm using this across the mix. We've got it going on. We got it going on. Drum room here. Just mute out the reverb there. 
And I've got this set pretty aggressively, you know, pretty low threshold, 10 to 1 ratio because I just want to clamp down on things. When you get in the 10 to 1 region, it becomes a limiter as opposed to just a straight up compressor because it's only going to let that signal up 1 dB for every 10 dBs it goes past the threshold. So it just kind of clamps right down. But, you know, it's got a 5 millisecond attack. Here's the raw signal. So we're just adding a bit more beef onto it. And that's the raw signal with no EQ or anything. Yeah. Same thing going on with overheads here. As you can see, I've got a super fast attack going on just to kind of stomp down on the initial snare hit. Because I want to be getting the attack on the snare drum close mic and not in the overheads. A little bit of the sustain on the snare is great on the overheads, but the initial attack, no, it can be a little too spiky and a little bit harsh on the ears. So just a real quick attack just to slam down on that snare. And you can see I've actually got, you can see exactly what's going on with that green line, how hard it's slamming down on that snare in the overheads. Let's pull it back a bit. That is just super cool. Now, the great thing is with this display here, we can speed it right up or we can zoom out and get a better look at what's going on over the whole track here. So once again, we're kind of just missing the initial attack on the snare and listen to this fill. Takes that a bit of the attack off the fill as well, which is really cool, but we still get the wash of the cymbals, which is exactly what we're after. Kick drum, exact same thing going on here. If we turn this off and compress this, we're compressing, really getting aggressive with the compression on the kick here. We've got three sources here. We've got two kick mics and a sub kick going on. Again, this is Jackson Ward on the drums. He just tracked this brilliantly, I might add. And that's pretty cool with a little bit of EQ and gate going on. You know, got that nice snappy thing, but this gets you into just so much cleaner attack. I'm going to pull this makeup gain down just a touch. So we're not shearing that signal off. Take that snare down a bit. And once again, I got it going on the toms as well. I've got three of these going on. And again, it just kind of helps give us that huge freaking sound. It's like throw it into this, this, this roll right here. Now, here's a real neat trick I read about years and years ago. Um, Do Bob Rock used this on the Dr. Feelgood record, and you know they just had this massive tom sound. What they would do was they would time the release on the tom compressors to open up just as the next beat would come down. So that's always something that's kind of stuck in my head. Now, if we take a look at Tom 1 here, we're going to throw this on a loop. And we're going to time this release so the compressor opens back up again just in time for the next hit. So we got a much faster release here. Let's zoom this in a touch. So we want to, again, we just want to open that release up just a bit, pull that attack down a bit, and off. Bring the threshold down a bit. Off. On. Bring that ratio up a bit. And again, we're just going to maybe slow the release time down a little bit. But yeah, we're just going to play with the release time here, see what we get. Seems to be coming just back up in time. So that's a pretty fast release. And that's pretty cool.
Oh, last up, we've also got it on our drum heavy compression bus, affectionately named the Crush Bus. And this is just meant to stomp the living crap out of the drums and give us just that much more attack. We mute out the drum verb here, unsolo this. We can just bring this in. Just adds that much more attack because it's just, it's a pretty strong threshold, 10 to 1 ratio. Very fast attack, very fast release. It's just meant to give us m that much more attack on all the close mics. And just bring it in. As you can see, I've got faders. I've got sends going to this fader all down my mix here. So that's pretty cool. But the Intuition compressor isn't just for drums. You can use it on bass guitar as well. Just to kind of keep things under control. It's a pretty good bass line, believe me, it's all right. But this just keeps it nicely under control. You know, we've got a slower attack auto release so we don't screw that up you know five to one ratio keeps things nice and in check throw the guitars in place now i did take those drums down a little bit so i can make them a bit spikier so i'm going to bring the guitars and bass down a bit add a bit of reverb in there Now, about that auto-release, this was something I asked for as a feature directly from AIX. Uh, for the, those of you guys who are wondering, hey, are you, what's the deal here? Are you getting paid for this video? No, but I am affiliated with AIX, and I was actually um, in contact with the development team as this plugin was being written, so I could throw in some features that I thought you guys could use, because this also works as a two-bus compressor on the full mix. And this is where the auto release comes in handy. Now, uh, you guys have seen me use an SSL bus compressor or, or you know, a reasonable facsimile of it. I've got a uh, SSL type bus compressor right here in hardware, uh, but I use the Waves one. I use the Brainworks uh, bus compressor. You know, I, I use them all over the place. And this is generally the sound of modern rock and roll because it will get your signal under control. The trick is four to one ratio, auto release, 30 millisecond attack time and go for about four dBs of compression, which is exactly what's going on here. Seems to have a bit of an auto limiter in place here to get those initial spikes under control. But if we turn this off, just kind of settles everything nicely together. And this is what I've thrown up and made the whole mix around is this kind of compression here because all the decisions I've made wind up going through this compressor. Now, this is a great thing about this. It, it, it's so versatile that it will not only work on individual sources, it will work on your two bus. And I think that's absolutely killer. So instead of having to go buy another plugin or anything like that, this does the job here. Now we can try it with a faster release, but we kind of got to go around and remix a whole bunch of stuff to do it. I really like the auto release function on this. Now here's where this thing really comes into play here. Check this out, we got key lesson here. And we can set exactly what part of the spectrum that this compressor is going to react to. So on a full mix here, I want to do right around eh, 75, 80 hertz, something like that. I just don't want the compressor stomping down on the extreme bottom end. And this is the one benefit this has over an SSL type compressor is you actually can do this. You can even cut out part of the top end as well. So it's only going to react to the mid range. We turn that key listen off. Okay, that might be a little much. And we don't want 6 dBs of compression. And pull this up to about 90 hertz. We want about 4 dBs. So we're just going to pull the threshold back just a touch here. Ah. 
Oh, oh, hey, hang on. I did make a I did make a uh, preset here. So SMG bus glue. A little bit of spike on the toms there comes down a little bit harder, which is fine. But this is smooth. I really like this. Now you can also zoom in and out on the actual signal. You want to get a closer look at what's going on here. That is freaking cool. And you can see the, the threshold line changes with that as well. So that's pretty cool. All right, so that's the AIX bus compressor. Link's available in the description below. If you want to get your head around working with compression and really understand exactly what the hell is going on, I highly recommend checking it out because this thing is super easy to work with. It's only been overdue for about 20 years. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.